Welcome to Grains and Grit. Um, I am super excited to finally get this video done. This is my most requested video. How to make a beautiful yeast loaf from freshly milled grains that is actually risen a good amount and is soft, it's not dense, it's delicious. The wonderful thing about this is it actually is pretty easy. It only requires one rise. Um, so it actually doesn't take hours and hours. It doesn't take all day to do it. Um, from the time I mill my grains to the time that it is ready to eat, it's probably only about two, maybe three hours. And that's including, you know, an hour for it to, about an hour for it to rest after it's baked to cool down. The rising time, which for me is only about 30 minutes to get it really, really high. I posted many of my bread photos on Instagram and Facebook and I have so many questions about how do you do the yeast bread and I completely understand. I um, have been milling my own grains for a little over eight years now and whenever I first started I did try um, a loaf of bread, a yeast regular loaf, regular loaf of bread and it was not good. It was dense, it didn't rise, and I did that a couple times and just gave up. So for years, whenever I made my bread, I made it more of like hamburger bun size. So it was smaller, I could do it. Hey, we got the freshly milled grains in, we can do it. Eventually, my husband really got tired of it and told me that I needed to make a loaf. So I experimented and experimented and experimented and finally came up with my own um, technique and recipe for these loaf breads. Two things that were a huge game changer for me, thanks to all the research that I did, was one, proofing your yeast. Now my yeast was always good, but I never proofed it. It really gets it activated and going and ready to go to do really well with your yeast bread. Second thing I learned was how to fold the bread in a way where it wouldn't have holes in the middle of the bread, but it would still rise, not be dense. This actually is an important step along with the proofing yeast. So I highly recommend you do not skip these two important steps. I know it adds to the bread making time, but it is worth it. And I said two things, but there are a few other things that are also important. Cooking the bread long enough in the oven is crucial. Um, I would not cook it long enough because it would come out and I think, oh, it's getting too dark. Um, I probably burnt it. No, I, I didn't. It is supposed to be a decent medium brown um, on your bread loaf in order for it to be cooked well on the inside. You also need to make sure that you rest your bread and it is so hard to do because nothing is better than fresh bread right out of the oven that's all hot. You put some butter on it and it's so good, but you need to wait because your loaf is going to fall. It's actually not gonna stay together. So even though it might look great, as soon as you slice into it, if it's super hot, fresh out of the oven, it's actually gonna collapse a little bit. It's not gonna stay well put together. So hopefully this video will answer a lot of your questions and help you to make beautiful loaves as well that are delicious, that are soft. So without further ado, here is my recipe and how I make it. The recipe will be in the description box below as well as a few other, a few other links. So hopefully this video will really help you on your journey using freshly milled grains. Enjoy. Okay, so this is my Bosch Universal Mixer. You can use a stand mixer. If you don't have a mixer, just get a um, a bowl. This is the dough, the dough hook extender that I'm using along with the dough hook for the Bosch. So I'm just putting that all nice and in place. Okay, so we're first gonna start with our proof. This is three and three quarter cups of warm water. So not super hot, but definitely not lukewarm either. Now we're going to put some flour in. We're not gonna put all of it. This is freshly milled hard red wheat. And we're going to put in three cups. So there's one, and two, and three. Now we add our yeast. This is two and a quarter tablespoons yeast. 
Now, if you have a cover, you're going to want to put it on in order to keep from flour going everywhere. And it's time to give this a good mix. If you are don't have a mixer, use a whisk. Okay, and now it is time to let this sit and proof for at least 15 to 20 minutes. If it's colder, you need to do it on the longer end. If it's hot, you can do it for about 15 minutes, but you're going to wait until it's nice and bubbly like this. Now we add three and a quarter teaspoon salt and then the remaining six cups of flour. I would not do any more than six. If you want to be safe, err on maybe five, you can always add. Okay, so as I mentioned, I already made a big oops and did not add my oil and honey. This is where I normally put it, mix it up, and then once it's good and mixed, then I start the kneading process. So you'll see how I recovered from this in just a few minutes. Okay, so let me open this up so you can actually see what I'm doing. And now flour shouldn't go everywhere because now it's incorporated. But you can see we're wanting to add enough flour where it starts to pull off from the side of the bowl. Um, so let me make sure I'm gonna keep this open and make sure. Okay, as you can see, I've stopped this for now, but um, all the flour at the bottom, I can see that it is incorporated into the dough and that it's none is sticking to the sides. Now, as you can see, this is a very rough looking dough because the next most important part is, or one of the very important parts, is kneading it for a good amount of time. Now, this is for two loaves of my bread with this recipe, this is two loaves. So I like to knead for about nine to 10 minutes. And that's in a machine for hand kneading. If you were to do this by hand, you would need probably even longer, maybe up to 20 minutes of hand kneading. So that's why I love the machine so much because it saves me a lot of work. I can knead it, turn it on and walk away. Now with this Bosch mixer, I just put it on the one setting, just the first setting. No need to do very fast. If you have a stand mixer, I would just do it where um, probably about, I think whenever I had a stand mixer, I would put it about medium to make sure that that dough hook is really getting all the dough. So we're gonna set this, we're gonna time lapse it for you guys. I'm gonna start with nine minutes and we'll check back in nine minutes. So we're gonna pause this for now because I completely forgot to add my oil and my honey. So had to pause. I need to add my oil and honey, which I, it's crazy. I've never messed up this bad on a bread, but this is probably gonna be a game changer. I might need to add more wheat flour. So just a little hack with honey. Honey and oil take up the same amount of space. So add the oil in with the honey and it comes right out. Pretty smooth. Now I don't always use honey but in this case, I feel like adding honey. You can add, definitely leave the honey out if you like. So let's incorporate this. Okay, so I'm gonna stop that. So I have never done that before where I forgot the oil and honey. So I'm glad that y'all saw this because even whenever you've been doing bread as long as I have, you can still make some mistakes. It's okay, you go with it. But as you can see, I did incorporate it in. I did have to add some more flour. It's funny because when I add to the flour, usually it does take more than nine cups. So I was surprised that today it only took nine cups. Um, so I did need to add probably another cup Whenever you do need to add flour, add just a little bit at a time. I was adding only about a quarter a cup each time and waited to see if I needed to add it more. Don't just 
dump it in. If you are doing, if you find a recipe and you want to convert it to freshly milled wheat, always add in the flour a little bit at a time because it can change based on just the day it is. I'm in Florida, it's very humid here, so sometimes it takes more flour on some days than it does others. So whenever you read a recipe, do not just, okay, say it says six cups, all right, we're just gonna dump six cups in. If it says six cups of flour, I would add five and then go from there. You can always add more. You cannot take it back. <laughs> so again, um, we're now gonna restart the timer with the kneading now that it's cleaning, it's coming off the bowl. As you can see, it's still a rough looking dough. It's coming apart. So we're gonna set the timer again, nine minutes. Let's go. Okay, so while this is going, just a few words about the wheat that I use. This is all hard red wheat. You can also use hard white wheat. The point is, is that it does need to be a hard wheat in order to get a good yeast bread that's going to rise. All right, so video cut off, didn't realize it with the kneading, but it did knead for about nine minutes. Um, and as you can see, the dough is actually quite soft. So I can kind of do this and it bounced back just a little bit. It's not sticking in my hand. You can see it's kind of forming back. Now a couple of nice tools to have, a little scraper. I got this at Dollar Tree. Helps cut the dough, helps also scrape it if it's on, and then a little, my little rolling pin here. So let's go ahead. So you can see I've got it divided in two. We're gonna set one aside. We're gonna learn how to fold this. All right. So you're gonna roll it out or <laughs> to a rough rectangle. We're not looking at, doesn't need to be completely perfect, but about 14 inches or so. And then you're going to take one side, stretch it, gently pull it and fold it over. Gonna push down, gently pull out, fold it over. Then you're going to roll it. So you're going to roll over and slightly pull back and roll. Slightly pull back, roll. Slightly pull back, roll. Slightly pull back and roll. See, it kind of looks like a weird burrito of some kind. So we're going to smooth this out. Into that. Okay, and then smooth this one over where it's kind of shaping it into a pretty good ball. Nice and pretty on top. And it should rise nice. You can see right there. Here's the bottom. You can see it's kind of not as pretty, but that's okay. No one's going to see it. All right, and then wall grease slow pan. This is a nine by five by about uh, two and a half, three inches. Well greased. Put it in. Now the next one. So again, it's nice and soft. That's a good dough right there. Nice and soft. Again, the more that you do this, the more comfortable you will be and the more, um, the more that you'll know what the dough should feel and look like. All right, so get rough triangle, about, again, you know, 14 inches, 13, 14 inches, about eight inches tall. Take it, and it's about that thick, not too thick, maybe three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch. All right, slightly pull it out, tuck it over. Slightly pull it out, tuck it over. And roll back, roll back, roll back, roll back, roll back, and then smooth it over. Move. Kind of work it, work it, work it, work it. Now, some recipes state to rise it multiple times. I've found that with freshly milled grains, it does not rise well a second time. It's best that I get it that very first time. So you can see pretty on top, business on the bottom. <laughs> and another loaf pan and over. Now the best thing that I have found to cover these, I don't flour any sort of bread, but any kitchen towel, you might run the risk of it weighing it down or anything. So I found old receiving blankets work great. Usually made of cotton and just slightly cover them. And we'll be back. These actually rise pretty fast for me. In about 30 minutes, <laughs> they are risen pretty well. So to kind of show you where they're at right now, let's take another look. 
and we're gonna rise them till they're about one to two inches above the pan. You don't want it to rise all the way because it's going to continue to rise in the oven. And if you rise it all the way in your oven, it's gonna end up falling. So usually what I do is while these are rising, because it doesn't take long at all and my kitchen is fairly warm, I go ahead and preheat my oven. And usually by the time that is done, these are good to go. Sometimes I even put them on top of my oven in a warm area if it's cold in my house. As the heat oven is preheating, it's, it's helping it rise. So we will check back in about 30 minutes. Okay, so it has been about 30 minutes and these are looking great. As you can see, they've expanded in the pan more and unfortunately you cannot see that they are risen about an inch, maybe two above the pan, not the full rise that they will end up in. So it's time to put them in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes and here they are. It turned out beautifully absolutely beautiful i was so excited to see how well these turned out and we're going to let them sit here for about 10 minutes in the pan and then you want to take them out and these came out very easily Okay, so let me show you what it looks like from the side. It rose a good about five inches. Again, beautiful. I was so pleased to see this. Now, again, the hardest part is it's time to let them rest for about an hour or at least until they're really good and cooled off. And here they are again, absolutely beautiful. They are all nice and cooled off and it's now time to slice them so i'm just trying to show you all around i know you can't get the best idea on video but again these rose about five inches and now let's grab a bread knife and see how these look on the inside i use a cut go bread knife but any bread knife will do As you can see, it's slicing very well. It's not crumbling at all and it looks beautiful. Again, I'm just so thrilled with how this turned out. And there it is, no holes or anything on the inside. Okay guys, that was it. I hope that was extremely helpful for you. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. Also, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you really like homemade bread and be sure to subscribe below and hit that bell icon for notifications so that you can follow more videos that I'll be doing using freshly milled grains. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram for more inspirations. Um, I also will be documenting my sourdough starter story on there and other things that I, whenever I'm experimenting, I'll probably document it on there so you can follow along there. It is Grains and Grit. The link will be below. Again, thanks a lot for watching and I hope y'all have a wonderful day.